Hello everyone, I'm Darlene Nipper with the National LGBTQ Task Force and I'm joined here today by uh, Michael Kaplan with Age United. Uh, Michael, thanks for having the conversation with us. Thank you likewise for doing it. Well, it is World AIDS Day today and we are focused on the theme, but I wanted to start the conversation, um, Michael, talking about sort of a scan and, and given your role as uh, President and CEO of Age United, uh, I think it's important for people to understand sort of the big landscape. Where are we in 2014 uh, HIV and AIDS? Wow, <laughs> that's, that's a big picture. I, I think, you know, I look at HIV from my own experience of living with it since 1992. Um, and I often say in start of the 90s, our big change was getting our first treatment, AZT, and now we're over 30. And we, in the last four years, have seen the world of HIV AIDS change more than ever before as we've learned about treatments prevention and pre-exposure prophylaxis. So we in a landscape, I think we have lots of exciting opportunity. I think we haven't achieved it. Um, and I, I assume you see the same a lot through the task force in your experience and what you're seeing. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, over the last 30 years, a lot has changed. As you know, we uh, brought on the first AIDS lobbyist, if right. you will, who became the executive director, director at the task force many years ago. And so a lot has changed. Right. And I think, I think you're right. You know, in the last four years, we've seen a lot more. But I think the thing that concerns me is, you know, re people really get an understanding about prevention and treatment, like what's really right. possible. I, I still have this right. concern that even in our movement, I'm not sure when I'm doing the work that I'm doing that people fully understand uh, how to prevent HIV right. and what's really possible in terms of treatments. Well, and, and I think people lack a lot in terms of understanding what treatment can do and what knowing your status can do. And I think what's changed a lot is, you know, our community used to have a fire under its feet in terms exactly. of this epidemic. Uh, and we're still seeing it. We're seeing young gay men, and particularly black young gay men, now the biggest component of the epidemic and growing where all other ep epidemics are going down in terms of heterosexuals and IDUs. And yet they're uh, outside of the task force stepping up and doing a lot of, in the last couple of years. It's been a little bit quiet in the queer communities. Well, that is something that has come up a lot. I mean, the focus right. on really, you know, what's the role for national LGBT organizations around educating people right. and educating community and, and fighting really hard to ensure that we really do achieve this sort of AIDS-free generation, yeah. right? I, I think there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people, at least in the work that we've done at mm -hmm. the task force in recent years, a lot of organizations and people in the movement who are very interested in this, right. wanting to step up and wanting to understand the role that we can play. Right. But Michael, what do you think, I mean, what do you think are some of the ways or the things that we need, some of the ways that we can do that and some of the things that we need to specifically say to the community so that they fully understand treatment and prevention. So I think one of the things is this right here. The conversation has not been there. We, uh, Kaiser Family Foundation just did a study on young gay men in terms of their understanding of HIV. And they found that many didn't know about treatment options and what treatment can do for prevention. Few knew about pre-exposure prophylaxis, and so we're we in a. We should talk about. We got to talk about both those yeah, and yeah, treatment yeah. as well. But we're we're in a community where instead we try to figure out how we hide our HIV status. How do we keep it low? People are stigmatized, and so folks aren't getting tested. They're not talking about it. If they are having sex, they're trying to, you know, there's nervousness about disclosing it. Will they be accepted? And I think I think those are the challenges. Is keeping the conversation more open. Sure. I think you've brought up a couple of things, mm -hmm. pre-exposure prophylactic, also just the whole, whole area of prevention. One thing that we haven't directly mentioned mm -hmm. is vaccines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember in my early work in HIV and AIDS, I we were hopeful right. that there would be a, a, vaccine, a vaccine that would actually just, you know, everybody could take yeah, it and exactly. that would be that. Help me to understand so that we can hopefully share with the folks who are listening with us where we are as far as, you know, treat, prevention, vaccines. What do, pe what do people really need to know? Uh, there is a lot of work happening on vaccines. I, uh, I, it's interesting. Ten years ago, I had more hope in vaccines, and I know we will get there. Mm -hmm. um, but what 
What I know today is we know how to stop it anyways. We know when someone is virally suppressed, it's literally impossible to transmit to someone else. And yet we live in a country where only a third of people living with HIV are virally suppressed. So we but now- But why? Why are only a third of people I, in the country- Okay, so we're, we're losing right away of the 1.1 million, we're losing about 16% just because they don't know their status. Got it. We're losing another quarter million because they never got linked into care. And Lord Willen, as AC, continues and as we do Medicaid expansion and we'll get into coverage, we'll do better there. Um, and then there are people who just don't start treatment. Our, at Age United, we enroll 4,000 people in care through Access to Care Networks. Wow. Between 15 and 30 percent of those folks have said they did not start treatment because they did not want someone else to know their HIV status. Okay, so now you're saying that stigma Absolutely. continues to play a very critical role in our ability to prevent and to get treatment for people who are HIV positive. Absolutely, it plays a huge role, whether it's your willingness to ask your doctor about getting your tested for HIV, whether you're ready to start treatment, whether you can do your daily adherence to treatment and let people know you gotta take your pills. Um, and, and when we're in a community who says, you know, being HIV positive is equivalent to not being clean, um, that we expect people to talk openly about their HIV status becomes a real challenge. Well, you know, here's the thing, Michael. We're gonna keep having this conversation. It is World AIDS Day. You brought up something really important. Stigma, stigma, stigma. We've gotta stop it. See you all next time on the next segment of this conversation.